Hello, um, in this overview mind map, we're going to look at the cardiovascular system. So in your lecture notes, uh, it is very nicely detailed, the, some of the normal figures associated with the heart in terms of the weight as well as the ventricular wall thicknesses. Um, the main function of the CVS is to actually pump blood throughout the body, as you can see I've written here. And what is the purpose of this? This is twofold. It is to supply nutrients to every part of the body, as well as to facilitate the removal of waste. So, for the heart to perform its function, there must be several functional components that are working properly. The first, of course, is the pump, and this is the myocardium. So, this is the main bulk of the tissue of the heart itself. And the next component is the conduction system. The conduction system uh, ensures that there is a regular coordinated rhythm so that the heart can actually do its function to pump the blood throughout the systemic circulation. And the next component are the valves. These are what essentially ensures the correct direction of flow of the blood so that the blood does not flow backwards or there's not too much resistance, uh, resistance to flow. And of course, we also need a proper blood supply to the heart itself. And these are brought about via the coronary arteries. Now, when we start looking at what is abnormal, uh, meaning heart diseases or diseases of the heart, we really want to try to figure out what is a good way to classify heart diseases. So you can follow the two A's. You can either go by anatomy, looking at different anatomical compartments, or by etiology. In uh, one of the earlier chapters on studying tips, I've mentioned this mnemonic, vitamin C and D, and this is quite useful to think about etiological categories. For example, V is vascular, I can be inflammatory or immune, T can be traumatic, A can be autoimmune, M is metabolic or toxic, I can be iatrogenic or infectious or even uh, idiopathic, and N can be neoplastic, C is congenital, and D is degenerative. So if you follow this, you will pretty much cover quite completely the diseases in the heart. So let's focus on anatomy now, and we can go outwards in, I suppose. So the first thing would be blood vessels. The vessels uh, actually include here the vessels that supply the blood to the heart, coronary vessels, as well as the larger vessels uh, like the aorta or perhaps the pulmonary artery. And uh, one of the possible uh, etiologies of disease or types of disease would be vasculitis. Now this is inflammatory and it's often immune mediated. Um, it can involve vessels of different sizes. Atherosclerosis is a very important uh, degenerative and inflammatory condition. I will talk more about this uh, later. Now the next anatomical compartment we're going to look at is the pericardium. So one of the conditions would be pericarditis, which again has an inflammatory uh, etiology, can also be infective. And pericardial effusion, this is essentially collection of fluid in the pericardial cavity. Uh, this can have a variety of etiologies. It can be due to infection. It can be due to decreased uh, plasma oncotic pressure, for example, due to uh, low albumin, or it can be also due to malignancy. Cardiac tamponade is a condition where the pericardial cavity is filled with blood and this blood will compress on the heart, making it uh, unable to fill properly and this can rapidly lead to mortality. So uh, an example of a cause of cardiac tamponade would be um, acute myocardial infarction with transmural necrosis and rupture of the myocardium. So you can see here in this picture that the pericardial sac has been cut open and the pericardial cavity is actually filled with blood. And this typically will increase with every heartbeat as the blood flows out and literally strangle the heart. So the mortality rate is very high. So moving inwards, we are now at the level of the myocardium. And uh, myocarditis is also a condition uh, which is inflammatory and sometimes can be due to viral infections. Cardiomyopathies, uh, these are a uh, heterogeneous uh, spectrum of conditions. And um, different types of etiologies, including congenital, secondary to drugs or toxins, and also secondary to infiltrative conditions. For example, if there is deposition of amyloid within the wall of the heart, this can affect the pumping function of the heart. The next and very important condition is ischemic heart disease, and this primarily affects the muscle of the heart. And I will uh, elucidate more about this later in a different mind map. 
Moving further inwards uh, into the endocardium, we have the valves or valvular conditions. And um, essentially, again, uh, similar to the rest, we can have inflammatory conditions such as rheumatic heart disease and infective endocarditis, which is frankly infectious or infective. Um, the, there can be degenerative conditions such as a calcific aortic stenosis as well as mitral valve prolapse. And uh, mitral valve prolapse can also be congenital, can be associated with connective tissue diseases like uh, Marfan syndrome. Now the last element uh, that I'll just briefly touch on is the conduction system. So you can see that actually some of these um, mirror the functional components that are required for proper uh, functioning of the heart as a pump. So for the conduction system, what can go wrong is there can be uh, tachycardia, which is increased heart rate, tachyarrhythmias, arrhythmias refer to abnormal heart rhythm, uh, slowed heart rate, bradyarrhythmias, or there can be heart block. And uh, there is a variety of etiologies which includes congenital conditions. For example, there can be abnormalities in the ion channels, giving rise to abnormal rhythms. Drugs and toxins can also give rise to arrhythmias. And um, hormonal imbalances uh, such as hyper or hypothyroidism, as well as electrolyte imbalances, particularly potassium level abnormalities can give rise to arrhythmias. So these are the patients that may have uh, renal impairment which can affect their serum potassium levels. There are also structural abnormalities in the heart. For example, if there is left atrial dilatation uh, secondary to atrial regurgitation, this can also give rise to abnormal rhythm such as atrial fibrillation. So I've highlighted here some of the important conditions, atherosclerosis, um, ischemic heart disease, and another one which I have not previously included, which is hypertension. Um, these we will talk about more in depth in different mind maps. And also not to forget um, the end, sort of end stage of many of the cardiovascular diseases, which is heart failure. So any of these diseases can contribute either singly or together to heart failure and we'll talk more about that later.